about to f*** the game up with this one. What was I doing? Caddis. Pupa, in fact. So this is a sort of a change of pace. We're doing a dry fly. And it's simple. So this fly is was developed while having a tough time fishing the caddis hatch and I mean some sometimes during during the evening hours it looks like someone's throwing golf balls into the river everywhere or like it's hailing there's probably other metaphors too and it's not super buggy in terms of the like the peak duns flying around and you can see big fish going I mean fish all sizes are going but um I just over three years kind of developed and you're only you're only fishing with a lot of data for two or three weeks every year and and this is has proven to go go beyond just that that two or three weeks and and be a great fly for I think sometimes they're taking it as emerging nymphs um on the dead drift or when it even when it lands the when it lands thing eh, well i think it's because fish are kind of stupid but during the caddis hatch i'll tie one or two i like to do two just so i can get like a 16 trailing a 12 or a 10 um something pretty big if you look at caddis pupa for like the 14s they're they have the shuck. They're they're just they're they are a mess, and they're twice as long, two and a half, three times as long, as they're done. You know, fourteen. So so going big and scraggly is not a bad idea. So the only change when you upsize on this is going to be more CDC or needing longer CDC. But we have a uh, size sixteen in the vise. Uh, again, the, the cast pupa hook. I like this because it's, it's light wire, but with a, a nice gap both for hookups and for keeling, which is important when you're tying something that needs to ride a certain way. So you can start at the hook eye, do whatever you want. This also works on any other hook. So you don't need to get the, get the cast pupa hook. I just have some handy, and that's what we're tying on. I started tying this, the black caddis. I use a lot of air quotes and facetious facial expressions because I don't think it really matters, especially when you're fishing it, the way that I had developed this fly to be fished and made a lot of discoveries while fishing it this way, which is stripping it fast and, and letting it die. But you're, you're more or less when you're watching fish rising and the caddis eat is a splashy, you know, they're coming up and getting it. And theor theories, just in my brain, I can only imagine elsewhere, theories abound as to why fish are spending so much energy. I think it's because they absolutely know that that thing is food. Whereas mayflies, nymphs, mergers, whatever. I don't know. I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to see a caloric breakdown of caddis pupa versus duns. And energy expenditure by a dun eat versus a pupa eat. So the I'd heard the splashy eat years ago was because um, the caddis dun is, you know, skittering around. And, and skittering your caddis. Sure, those are both true. The discovery in the, what the hell, started going on in really not a super golf ball 
hailstorm type event. It was really just a couple fish. It was in a, a much less, more sparsely populated, less population dense area. It was in the lower end of a tailwater, and there's there's big fish. There's also small fish, and there's there's fewer. There's just fewer trout. There's also fewer bugs. It, it, specifically in this, it's pretty close to the lake, and they're eating, and I couldn't couldn't get him to eat. I knew one was big because I had hooked it, but it felt sort of accidental. And so just thinking about how it ate, when it ate, what was going on, what it wouldn't eat, and I started just chucking pheasant tails. So what I'm doing here is tying CDC off the back here, just like that. And what I'm doing here is tying CDC off the back and I'm going to reverse tie over some palmer pheasant tail. And since I'm mostly using it for profile and color really doesn't matter on this one, I've done it with and without the wire as well. I'm using this, I, I got some red and some caddis green. So I'd encourage you to explore the color options in your local shop's pheasant tail department. Uh, since I have two of these and I'm not tying a bunch of red pheasant tails, although sulfurs in the early stages of their development, those nymphs are like a deep oh, air conditioning shut off. We'll see if that just destroys audio or now. You guys are captivated, so I'm looking for wire. I have it right here, organized. So I've done it without wire and man, these things, they eat it like a streamer. You're fishing it like a streamer. Um, maybe I'll call it, yeah, it's micro top water. It's not even micro. So I was going dry with, with something behind it, like a little nymph, like an unweighted pheasant tail, which by the way is just put that behind most of your dry flies. If you, if you don't have a confidence fly, now you do. And so I was just, I was finding they're eating it on the swing, but it wasn't, I wanted to keep exploring that because it was a caddis hatch and I was fishing a, a nymph. And so then I just started chucking pheasant tails, unweighted pheasant tails, where if I saw, you know, big eat, another big eat over the course of, it's not very long, a minute, the, the bugs come out in big numbers. I started chucking pheasant tails and just found same same deal and sort of an accidental discovery because when you're out there and you know I'm solo and there's no I don't know it felt like I, I was just doing stuff that um, it was happenstance what was occurring almost random and then starting to piece that together and. So I started tying the pheasant tails, and at this point, I'm just going to palmer. Use my spinning vise catch my pheasant tail. Now, the one reason tying on these is not my favorite thing. And actually fishing these is not my favorite thing. The hook eye is for like, that's the equivalent of fishing like a size 26. I digress yet again. So the more, the buggier I got to a certain extent, the more commitment I was getting and then almost the bigger I got again to a certain extent but really pretty big you know 10 tens and 12s for for 14s and 16s a lot of commitment but the real 
the real aha and in incorporating that swing was keeping it bug we'll call this the meniscus was keeping it here and what that so the surface of the water it, it's sitting on top but half the bug is kind of under it, it's sitting on the top like like a dry fly does but there's enough of an imprint into the water and so i'd done some with just the cdc on top fishing them the same way really splat strip 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 ideally your fly stops at some point in in a trout mouth so reverse tie CDC, pheasant tail, ribbing, it does add some um, variegation, segmentation, but it, it helps immensely with durability. I've had some of these with just two or three little wisps of CDC hanging onto the bottom and they are still crushing it. And, and so the movement, really, the movement is, is pretty key. And you can probably get away with catching educated trout that see a lot of bugs using flies that aren't this. But I have found that th this is just like all flies, at least that I enjoy tying and fishing. I want something that is visual if it's a dry fly, I'd like to see it. I like emergers to be in the film. I don't like to fish nymphs and call them emergers. And for streamers, of course, I wanna I wanna see it see it getting ate up. So I'm gonna go back over that since I haven't figured out the lighting thing yet. I'm, I'm going blind because of this light. Mm, maybe I'll be smart and do this. You're watching me learn live. I'm not really live since this is recorded. So the thought process behind So the thought process behind the CDC and the going around deal is I wanted something, I actually sat in my boat looking looking out of the side of my boat into the water when it was it was on until I saw a caddis trying to get out of the water and for anyone who's told me that they have seen a caddis emerging I don't believe you <laughs> which is a testament to how my vote of confidence really for for how far gone I am it, it took a long time and it wasn't just one time of waiting for like 15 20 minutes while fish are fucking exploding everywhere um, I did it for like many times I was out for weeks I would just not fish and stare at the water, kind of recalibrate every once in a while to actually see the little specks because you sort of start to lose your focus until I saw one and it was like vibrating, pulsing. And I know that these things fill up with air. I don't actually know that. I've, I've read. But what I what I saw was just like, oh damn. It's so wiggly and it's so shaky. It's also, this is a big deal as well. 
the eat percentage after a good cast, good, we'll say presentation's the same. Yeah, versus, you know, this, let's just call it 100%. This is still moving. We're, we're, everything's the same here. This is 100%. This would be then 30%. And then starting to get farther away from parallel with the direction of flow, you, you start you don't get to zero and then they're eating them on the on the drop and dead drifts and it's just you know they're fish again not very smart but this so casting it off to the side of them or going directly downstream which can be tough with hookups but they eat it so damn hard that it's not a little meh, and then you risk pulling the hook out of their mouth they're coming up sideways on it and so getting the the silhouette of something because caddis aren't swimming sideways right they're, they're not skittering while in the surface of the in the meniscus of the water they're not going sideways like nature doesn't work that may as well be if we were looking at food that would be the the tablecloth or the dinner plate like we don't register that as food trout aren't going to register something doing this as food this direction that's a little bug getting up and swimming out and going back and forth and doing its little thing so it's a weird one for sure and it completely ruins fish so I, I would I would suggest you if you haven't explored the the option to fish differently especially during the caddis hatch where where you're not getting fish or you're you're fishing on uh, some pressured water or hell, do this for fishing mayflies. Um, it, it's just a buggy little thing that has has really, outside of the unweighted pheasant tail thing, I, I would say that f for dry flies, this would be definitely for the caddis hatch. This is like, this is my secret sauce. And outside of the swim bug and the loaf which are two awesome streamers this little thing is truly a unique design and the way you fish it and um just you know it's, it's three years in the making of watching watching water and, and trying to trying to pattern these things so um super easy cdc pheasant tail optional wire basically any hook you want down to a you can do it on a 20, it starts to get a little clunky. And then once you get beyond the 14, 16-ish, um, you really need to, you know, like some of these shorter ones won't necessarily work. Anyways, I think we're going with two birds, one caddis. Use these little long, long wispy guys for the big ones. Have fun.